All right, ladies, I am back. And gentlemen, and whoever's listening, I'm back. I'm Nutritionist Rob with Black Woman Obesity TV. And we're going to continue part two of our history of uh, how we eat and slavery, etc., and bring us all back up to date so you understand what actually is going on. Obviously, I was talking about how these white supremacists from England set all this up. It's uh, quite remarkable. And um, and I also want everybody to understand that they are constantly re-enslaving us. That's what they do. And people, that, that is just, that flies right through you. But this is great information. Knowing this information keeps your keeps you in peace. And you don't have to deal with this. You don't have to worry about anything anymore. Now you know what's going on. You can take care of your weight. Get this weight off. Get healthy. Start eating healthy. We're going to establish a new eating culture for us, right? All right. We're going to talk about this national public policy against black people. The national public policy against black people, which they methodically but quickly implemented in the 16 and 1700s. So now we're going to so we're going to talk about 1619 to 1685, phase 1. This is an ongoing, everlasting, ongoing, everlasting national public policy against black people. It means it's everlasting. It doesn't stop until this thing collapses. They're not stopping it. So along with this national public policy against black people, they also had, they also implemented some other things that we're going to get deep in, which is called, they had established a code of conduct or a code of etiquette for whites and blacks so white people had the the white civilians who were not setting this up had to get in line or they were going to get in trouble they would be punished if they did not know so we're going to talk about that code of con- conduct which is the code of etiquette and that that leads us up to the slave with the slaves eat because the slaves would eat the worst foods then they did this they worked through this through propaganda Propaganda was always used to divide the people. Back then, the propaganda was basically announcements in newspapers. Today, it's social media and TV. The technology is just this used. Propaganda is used to divide the people. And back then, they divided the slaves. Then, when they distract you with all their propaganda and lies, uh, the fourth thing is they steal from the public. Behind our backs. Money, land. Just looking at today, they just printed up 12 trillion dollars and gave it to themselves i mean that that goes does that go that goes right through you they print up their own money and they give it to themselves and you black people you ain't getting none of it and finally like i was talking to you they're constant re-enslavements of black people over and over they have to keep us unhealthy mentally and physically so they keep re-enslaving our minds and our physical health. They don't stop. So what was the national public policy against black people? What was the national public policy against black people? Well, they did it in, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different areas they did this they set this policy number one no blacks were to participate in any government affairs no blacks were to participate in any government no no nothing no whatever senators congress whatever it is gonna we no we're not involved with that not at all which mean the government was controlling what we ate and the plantation owners, but we'll, we'll get into that. Number two, business. Blacks were not allowed to have businesses. Now, that's really not true because there were free slaves. Just like there are some brothers and sisters making some money now. And they'll let you make some money. You're not going to be involved 
in the money, but you can make some money. And they had free slaves, and they had to prove that they was that they were free. But they there were free blacks back in then. Uh, back in then, you know, maybe two three percent of the people back then, or even a little more, were sl- were free. And as we go along, it became less and less. But there were a lot of free blacks. But they did not have the same privileges as whites. So basically, though, we were not allowed to own a business. Which means because it was an agrarian society, they couldn't grow their own foods and sell it for profit. Basically. Even though some did. Some of the masses would let us do that. But but we didn't grow our own foods for our own family. Number three, education. We were denied reading and writing English. We weren't allowed to read English. But but it's very interesting because in a lot of the slave cabins, they were reading and writing. They weren't reading and writing English. They were reading and writing their own language, which they came over here with. A lot of you didn't know that. They could read and write. They just weren't allowed to read and write English. And as as time goes on from generations, then we didn't know how to read and write. That was that form of control. Number five. Excuse me, number four. The church. They did it through the church. And, And the church used the announcements. The church is where they used the church to announce the proper etiquette and how to treat blacks and how blacks would <laughs> how blacks were to respond to whites and how whites would respond to blacks that was very important so that's what they did it was in the church they established the proper etiquette and the code of ethics that we were supposed to act how we were supposed to treat each other whites were not supposed to have any weakness against or for black people. No empathy for black people. That was part of the code of ethics. So if somebody, if you had a uh, two pieces of chicken and you gave that slave a piece of chicken, you're in trouble if you were white. That's not going to happen. You're not, you can't give them that. That's the proper etiquette that was way back then. And if whites didn't get with the program, they were punished. So they were under some pressure too. And they used Jesus and substantiated slavery in the Bible. I'm not going to get into that, but you know the issues with that. So what they told you is that Jesus was a white man. That's what they told you. He was a white man. So they were actually somewhat lenient in the church. They allowed, they, they gave a lot of the slaves Sunday off because they had to substantiate this Bible with slavery and we had to know that there was a white Jesus I mean you see white Jesus in black churches now we know that the Israelites were were what you call brown skinned people they know this but that's part of the control number five safety Blacks were unarmed. They could could not have any weapons at all. No weapons. So we were unarmed. They had weapons. They had whips. They had whatever. We we weren't allowed to have that. We were basically looked at as savages. And I'll talk to you about that because that's what the propaganda was back then. Is that we were savages. And if we escaped, the population was going to be in trouble. That means they're going to come in and rape white women. And we know that's ridiculous. That's propaganda back then. Talk a little more about that coming up. Number six, housing. The housing, there was poor conditions. Overcrowding. Poor cooking facilities. (laughs) We'll get into that. They didn't have utensils. No utensils at all. Most of the most of the houses were on dirt. 
they were sleeping on, you know, basically, you know, like animals. I mean, some, some, some huts were better than others. Some were more communal, but generally speaking, not good housing conditions. And number seven, (laughs) we ate the worst foods. And this is what we're going to be talking about. The masters did not care about our health. Because feeding black people meant spending money. So they basically just gave us the scraps of what we didn't eat. And again, we're going to get totally into this soon. They had poor clothing. The majority, the majority of the plantations gave the slaves winter outfits, one, and summer. And some they only got one per year. And that was usually during the holidays like Christmas. So they can tell you that the white Jesus was uh, responsible for it. Because you got to remember, our health wasn't, wasn't important, but they could always replace these slaves. Because a lot of times the, the states at the particular time, not yet, would reimburse them. So they had some kind of um, insurance. So we really never questioned about what we were eating. We just ate what they gave us. And we're the same way now. We don't question it. We just go to store and eat. So it's basically the same thing, just different technology. We just, they just ate basically what they gave them. Nothing's changed. We don't question any foods about then, and we don't question any foods now. That's why we have this channel. And basically, to be a little more blunt, we were begging for foods back then, and we're begging for foods right now. Basically. Not all people. And people go, you know, when you can't say all, the majority. We got food deserts and everything going on right now. Nothing's changed. But the most incredible thing about all this is why we're special people is that we survived this. We survived this. We found foods and we made them taste good. Whatever we had. Amazing. No utensils. A lot of us, I mean, it just, I don't know how they ate. But we're going to get more into what they found and what they did and how they cooked it. So basically around 250 years, we were quarantined and, and, and couldn't go out and find our own food, basically. Even though we're going to talk about they did farm and they had to do it uh, a lot during secrecy. Okay? I want everybody to understand that everything in this national public policy and government, business, education, <laughs> church, the safety, the housing, and the health of slaves and the system that they're running. It's all for the betterment and protection of white life, period. And you think that these people still care about you and you vote Democrat and they're running the same system and you think the Democrats like you. That's foolery. This has been going on. The Repo- Democrats and Republicans, they know what's going on. And we're fools. But in order to change these things, we have to get together and talk about this. And change and help each other and eat better and shop better. All right, that's part two. So now we're going to talk about this etiquette that we, that they establish on how we're supposed to be act in public. All right. It's going to be part three. All right. So I will see you in part three. I'm out.